Hi folks, I'm Matt and I am ranking all the games in my collection. We are at number 230. Here we go. And number 230 is a new game into my collection. It is Winna Winna Chicken Dinner. And this game is basically a dice rolling game where it's also push your luck. You're rolling these dice, you're moving this dog, which is the uh, game in tracker as when he gets to his doghouse, game's over. But you're collecting chickens, turning those chickens into cooked chickens. That way no one can steal them. If it's a chicken, it goes in your bag and it's up for anyone. People can steal chickens from you. And you're also rolling these foxes. So you're grabbing these fox cards that can help you out and give you a little certain cheats in the game. Now, this game is for kids, but to be honest, folks, it's a beautiful game. It has a nice little, feels like a mass, uh, it's, a, it's a nice little mouse pad mat, you know, that you, instead of a board, uh, board, you're playing with a mat there. It's really nice. And the dice look nice. The art looks nice. There's nothing wrong with this game. There's even a rubber chicken. Why? Who cares? Um, the, I got this game in my review I told you every time I play with my nephews we always say win the win the chicken dinner and I even say uh, who was the chicken dinner last game you know who's the winner so when I saw the title I was like I gotta get this I don't care what it is and we started playing I was like wow this is a really smart game in fact this is another game that kind of got lost in the shuffle got played during my review and did not I wanted to get it back to the table but it didn't get back to the table so it's probably why it ranks a little bit slower but it is a phenomenal game on Black Friday I saw it slash like 15 bucks so that's a great deal for this game. Uh, for kids, boom. For families, two thumbs up. Really check out this game. It is really awesome. But I'll be honest, this is a game that I am not afraid to bring out to my board game group. I don't think I ever have because I think me and my nephews have been playing it the whole time. But I would, I would happily bring this out to my board game group, and I know they would love it. It is, it's a Yahtzee style game, but it is so much fun. Win the win the chicken dinner, my number two thirty. At number 229 is a game that has been in my collection for four years, but it hasn't been played, I think, in three. Um, it's Mice and Mystics. Oh, Mice and Mystics is a beautiful dungeon crawl, mainly for families, though, but uh, adults can like it, too. The pieces look beautiful. You are these mice in these medieval times achieving these little goals. You're going through these scenarios. There's a great solo mode for this. In fact, I played it all through solo and absolutely had a great time. I don't know if they're reprinting the other expansions to it, but there's like two little expansions, I think, a few print and plays. I have it all, and I played through it all. I think this game is super smart and the miniatures look beautiful absolutely gorgeous um, they did come out with a kind of a spin-off a miniatures game tail feathers i went ahead and got tail feathers just because i love the mice and mystics era i'm not really a miniature game fan but we played that and wow, it was great. It's kind of a hybrid of miniatures and board game there. But even that was a really great game. And those minis oh, with the mice riding the birds, unbelievable. Uh, if you're looking for a fun, fun, fun dungeon crawl for your family, you gotta get Mice and Mystics. Like I said, when my little girls grow up, we are going to play eventually. We're gonna play Mice and Mystics together because I think they're just gonna adore it. And I adore the storyline too. I think it's really smart. And it's been so long that I've kind of forgotten some of the storyline now. Uh, this is a game I, I would, I do want to get it back to the table. It's just, you know, I like to finish my game. So if I get it out there, we're gonna have to have a lot of plays to finish all those quests. But to be honest, it is well worth it. Mice and I've seen this game painted. Oh, I wish I had the talent because painted, it looks absolutely wonderful. But the reason it ranks so low on my list is because, it, like I said, it hadn't been played in a couple of years. Ever since I got it, I beat it, and I just haven't had to bring, time to bring it back out the table. But one day I will, and on that day, it shall rise like the phoenix once again on my list. Right now, it's just on the list at 229. At number 228 is a new game added to my list. It is Ishtar. Ishtar, the secret gardens or the garden. I can't remember what it's called. Something, something with gardens. Uh, this is actually this is actually a surprisingly good game. I, I was un sitting on the fence on whether I should buy it or not. And I did eventually get it because it's got some worker placement. It's got some uh, area control. It's uh, you're, you're placing uh, different uh, your, uh, different tiles down the board to get certain uh, items. To, I mean, to get certain points at the end of the game. You also got this uh, little player board where you can do upgrades. And to be honest, you yeah, I don't think you can upgrade every single one. So your strategy will change as you are moving. And any one of the there's different ways to win this game. Any one of the strategies uh, can work. Really smart game. Looks absolutely 
absolutely beautiful. And I see this game dropping in price. I got it on a daily deal, I think, but now I think that's the regular price for this one. I can't remember how much how much I paid for it now, like 30 bucks or something. Maybe even be lower than that. But Ishtar is a really great game. I would call it a midway game, not really a I don't I don't I don't think because of the complexity of some of the different paths to a victory, I wouldn't call it a gateway game, but I think it's one of those next step games that are definitely, definitely worth your time. Absolutely love Ishtar. Happy I got it. Happy I, I, I took the plunge and got Ishtar. Beautiful game. Number 227 has been in my collection so long, I did not know it was new. <laughs> it's a queen game uh, that I absolutely love. It's a children's game called Inuk. Uh, I think that's what it's called, Inuk. I don't know how you pronounce that, but it's like a little Eskimo game. Basically, this is uh, you're flipping tiles like uh, the game of memory, but certain tiles cannot, you know, the, a predator can only go after the smaller group or something in equal uh, value. So eventually you'll get, it's push your luck too, because if you keep flipping over tiles and then you flip over a tile where it's bigger than the other in the food chain, it's bigger than the tile you just flipped over, you lose all your tiles. So, you know, you're only going to flip over maybe three, maybe four if you're really brave or stupid, but you're not flipping over that many tiles. And there are some tiles that are pieces, puzzle pieces to the igloo on the board. If that's the case, you get to place one of your Eskimos and that's that in-game scoring too, which those points can come in handy as well. This is just a, it's like memory on steroids is what they did. They just gave memory of just a few extra uh, rules. I absolutely love this game. Another one that I got off Miniature Markers, you know, get rid of our trash sale. I think this one again was like three bucks. Folks, it's worth 10. I mean, the pieces alone, it's worth 15 even. Um, even though you'll never find for that much because it's always super cheap. I think I was the first person to ever do a review on it too. And I love the game. Yes, it's for kids. It says Queen Kids on it. But I'll be honest, I, I would play this with adults too. And I think they would love it. Uh, it's just an incredibly fun game. Again, if you have kids, I highly recommend this game. I think it's so much fun. I love the game of memory, but this is uh, you know the next step up from memory, and I love it even more for it. So, Inuk. We are doing a triple header and new games added to my list. So at number 226 is Oliver Twist. Oliver Twist, folks, everyone is controlling Oliver Twist. They're moving across the board, collecting items and selling them to Fagin for a certain price. The more of an item you have, the more money you could possibly make, even some bonus money. Everyone has a player shield, which has got to be one of the coolest player shields in the world. It's like a little, it's like a little house folded around. And even though you try to keep things secret, Nothing secret because people, and this is thematic, are peeping in your windows to see what you got. <laughs> it's really great. You can skip over as many items as you want, but those items you skip over go on your police file. At the end of every round, there's two big rounds. You pull out your police file, whoever has the biggest one is gonna lose some points. It's not gonna take you out of the game, but it does make you get creative on where you move Oliver Twist and how many you know pieces you skip over just to get that one big piece to sell into Fagin. Uh, on the first top of it, the board is two-sided, a daytime and a nighttime. In the daytime, you are collecting these items. They're worth zero value, but when you flip it over at night, you, those, those items, the more you have, can help you get bigger bonus points at the end of the game. Also at night, a lot of the tiles are face down, meaning you're slowly flipping them over as you go through the town. Absolutely love that. Um, I got this game again on a super sale for like 10 bucks. Folks, it's worth 20. The box itself looks great. The artwork's wonderful. Um, I don't even know that much about Oliver Twist anymore. I've forgotten a lot about Charles Dickens' classic. But what they did with this game is brilliant. It looks beautiful. It plays awesome. I played this with my adult gaming group as well as my nephews. It's, of course, it plays as a good family game. It is very true to the book as far as I understand. A lot of the character cards that were in the book are you know, or characters that were in the book or on the cards there that you can play because there are special cards you can play in the game too. Really nice game. Another game that I think just flew under the radar by everyone, but really well worth your time. Oliver Twist. At number 225 is another game that is celebrating five years on these bookshelves. It is Temple Run, the board game. Now, Temple Run, the board game, you can get at any flea market for like a dollar. I, I hear people comment on my video all the time, I found this for a buck. Yeah, I did too. So, I mean, you can get it for really, really cheap, probably cheap online too, not a buck or two, but if you find it at a flea market or a Salvation Army store, you definitely got to pick this up. I picked this up because I used to play the app at the time, loved the app, and said, oh, they made a game about this. 
This is a great game. This is a speed racing game as you're chucking dice as fast as you can. There are certain monkey lizard cards that, I mean, dice, dice faces, you can't re-roll those, and that's gonna make that monkey lizard move down, which is gonna add pressure to you, because you, if you get caught by him, you're out. And if you, uh, there's a timer that you're hitting this idle, it's giving you the noise from the app. If that timer runs out, then you go all the way to behind the last person in line, which means that little demon monkey lizard can catch you. But also, as you're rolling these move tokens, you need to count your spaces because you, you get real nervous. You see all these moves, you went, oh, that's good. You hit this idle, this is how I die every time. And then you end up landing exactly on a trap. If you land on a trap, you're out of the game. That is how I've been out of this game every time. I've never won this game. The board is modular, it has these tiles that you they're double-sided, so you can always flip it up and make the make the temple move and twist. And you have tokens in the game like you do when you're playing the app that can help you do certain things as well. Man, this is just a fun game. I think every time we bring it out, we have a great time. This is one of the games that my wife will play with me because she loves Temple Run. She's actually pretty good at it too. In fact, a lot of times I think she's won. Um, I, I will never win this game, but I will always laugh and have fun. There are levels on the um, idol that you can switch up to make it easier or harder. Um, we did it for hard once, once, never again. The time is way too short. But, but like I said, you can tier the difficulty if you want to. Really fun game you can get it for super cheap. Highly recommend it. Temple Run, the board game. At number 224 is a game called Gisborne. Gisborne, you are hiking through, I believe it's New Zealand. You're collecting cards, playing cards, all of the same color. I think it's gold, silver, bronze. And you're trying to collect victory points. Uh, well, just points along the way. Points are in cards. Points are getting at the end of the path. Now, if when I gave you that review a long time ago of the game, I told you the game is broken. Why move when you can just sit there and keep collecting cards, which can be translated to points at the end of the game, probably more points than the person reaching first. So what we created, and this really works, is you subtract victory points for every tile space they're away, and then the, the, um, for every space they're away from first place. And the further behind in tiles, that number will increase by one. Oh boy, now you see everyone trying to race and get to the end, if you do it that way. See, there is no penalty for not finishing which kind of makes it dumb because all you have to do is sit there and just gather as many cards as you can at the end and you'll probably get more victory points too at the end. I've seen that happen. The first game we played, someone reached first, but then I sit there and just start gathering cards. I said, is this legal? We tried to see if it was legal. It, it is. And then I ended up winning, even though I never even crossed the finish line. So that's kind of stupid. But doing it this way adds a penalty in there that definitely gets everyone going. Now, I don't know if I can recommend this game because like I said, you're saying, well, Matt, the, the rules are broken. Yeah, true. But if you use that house rule, it does make for a fast and furious uh, racing game that you do need to watch your spots as well because certain spots can penalize you where other spots can really benefit you if you land on them exactly. This, this is another one that's a modular board. You, you're going to bring it out and move the, ro the road. The path will always be different. There'll be different obstacles along the way too. There are wolves, I think swamp areas, rivers where you can lose uh, certain cars and whatever, So and cities that can actually help you out along the way. Uh, but it is a really fun game. Absolutely love it. That is my 224 or whatever we're on right now. At number 223 is another queen game called High Tide. High Tide is a hilarious, oddly themed game where you're trying to get your deck chair to the edge of the ocean. Now, the first one whose deck chair actually lands in the ocean, they, lose, they get zero points for that one beach row, and then the game ends. So you're trying to get as close to the riverfront as you can for the most points, but not be the first one to go into the drink. Really weird. Uh, this is a game that has a dice pool, an area of pool, uh, a pool where you put your dice in, yuck, yuck, yuck. And so you're selecting dice and moving your deck chairs off of these several different colored beaches. Now the game comes with a bunch of add-on extensions to the game. Folks, play them all. If you play it plain Jane, it's going to be a boring game. You play it all, it's going to be a great game with lots of different dimensions. And I don't know why they do this. Uh, uh, the, I think the uh, guy who created the game, he does a lot of this. He makes a really simple stripped down version and then adds all these parts that he really likes, but he thinks, well, maybe I need to make it simple. But when you put it all together, the game's not that hard at all. Uh, this is a game that I remember I was trying to work out a trade with someone and he said, well, would you trade high tide? And I was like, yeah, no, no, I, I wouldn't trade high tide. I had to turn down the trade deal because like, 
no, I kind of like high tide. I want to keep that one. So I, I kept it in my collection, missed out on a good trade for that. And you're thinking, wow, someone wanted high, high tide is very cheap. You can get it anywhere. But he was kind of interested in that one. I was like, no, I'm keeping my high tide. It's a queen game. Um, absolutely love this game. Like the uniqueness of it. It's a very low scoring game. I think the high shin goes 35. I don't think anyone's ever gotten to the 30s. High 20s is the best I've seen someone. But you play with all the little mini extensions to the game inside of it because that's where you're going to get even more points and you're going to need that like the surfboards um trying to think of whatever thing surfboards uh cards can give you points for being the first one to go into the drink or staying in the cabana like not even moving one of your beach shares if you do that you could get points too uh depending on what color beach it is and then there's shark tokens that can move your character whoever's front and back um, just uh, there's a lot in lifeguard little tokens that can give you special abilities in the game. I highly recommend playing with everything here. But High Tide, another cheap game by Queen that's really solid. Next up at number 222 is a new game into my collection, a really small game called Rocky Road a la Mode. Uh, you are an ice cream popsicle truck and you're moving through the town and selling your ice cream, your goods, trying to get, I believe it's nine medals or nine points. First one to do that wins the game. This game is really cool. Uh, you take actions according to the cards you play or the cards you collect. Those actions move you down the road. Now, this is one of those things like uh, uh, some certain games, whoever's last will go first. So even though I made some big move and I went around the board, you know, because I made this big move, made a lot of points, it doesn't matter because now I won't be going for probably a couple of turns while everyone is slowly and you can do little moves to keep going. There's strategy there. Uh, to keep building up and just get a lot of points and catch up with me. A uh, really smart game, very colorful game. It's a mini little game. It's a very small box. And I got it for the theme. Not really crazy about the art, but it's okay. The theme's good and the game is solid. I play this game a lot, even after uh, I reviewed it, because it was just so fun, easy to set up, easy to explain and play. Uh, absolutely blast playing the game. Absolute blast playing the game. There's a uh, the version you can play where you put out all these free little tokens around the road. Play with that every time. Every time I put all the tokens out because that even, you start planning out your actions. If you don't do that, there's these three like all American popsicles that are nice. You always want to land on those. But when you put out all the tokens, then you're going, ooh, I could really use, use another orange you know, sherbet, you know, whatever, popsicle. So I need to make something that gives me just two actions so I can grab that one. So I can do so. You start planning like that. It's really awesome. So uh, Rocky Road Island Mode, you can get on Amazon or basically anywhere for a pretty decent price. It is well worth your time. Absolutely love that game. And finally, at number 221 is a St. Patty's Day themed game that I think everyone should own. Corrigans, still in print. I think it's like 2015, but you can get this really cheap. And it's an awesome game. Uh, in it, you are playing leprechauns and you're trying to find a pot of gold or get as much gold as you can and then eventually get to the pot of gold at the end of the game. What you're doing, you're drawing these little wooden tokens from the board and you're placing them on the board, either horizontally or vertically. Now, the only rule is if you pick up the same color that's already been played horizontally, you have to play it vertically or vice versa. You can't play two of the same color on the the same rows and what you're doing is you're it's a process of elimination of eventually when someone picks the final color of one of the I think seven colors the game ends after that and then you get to plant and usually there's only one or two spaces to plant the uh, a pot of gold by then but you plant the pot of gold wherever it is and then it's a mad dash to get to the pot of gold so why not just sit around and kind of maneuver your way toward the pot of gold? Because the whole way you're moving across this board and you're, and you're getting gold coins or friendly animals to help you around. Animals that help you move and maneuver through the game. Uh, I think the bunny rabbit and the squirrel are the most common ones. They can get you most where, but they have frogs, birds, moles, uh, all sorts of things that can get you through different areas. And you definitely want to utilize that and get as many forest friends as you can. Because uh, when the game ends and the pot of gold is there, then one at a time, for every, for every movement you make, you have to give up one of those animal friends. So you may not have enough. If you, if you went for straight gold and didn't have the animals, you're not going to make it to the pot of gold and score those big victory points at the end. If you get one leprechaun there, you score some victory points. If you get two, you get even more. I really like this game. The game looks beautiful, very colorful. Uh, I love the theme as well. The game's pretty cheap for what it's worth. Yeah, the pieces look really nice. And uh, there's 
all different kinds of strategy in this game. Uh, there's This is one that has a unique special ability that if someone gets a certain tile or a certain coin or I think it may be a stalactite or whatever, if they grab it, uh, there is a, uh, something you can do against another player where you take their shield away. Everyone has a player shield. Well, this removes that shield, and now for the rest of the game, you can't hide it. All the, all the coin you have, everything you have, we can see it in plain day. I've never seen a game do that before. I think that's so awesome. It sucks. It sucks you have to reveal your player shield. And no one likes that when, when that scenario pops up. It doesn't pop up all the time, but it makes for a very fun game. This is a great game. Uh, check it out if you're in the market for unique themes like I am, I am and games that fly on the radar. This has a way more strategy than what you would think about. Corrigan's, my number two. 21, I hope. I'm not even looking here. But anyway, folks, hey, come back and see me next time. I'm going to keep ranking these games. See you later.